Hello, welcome to KBC's Bible study, looking at different characters in the Bible. And today we're looking at an extraordinary man, a chap called Stephen. Find him in Acts chapter 6 to 7, uh, when the early church was just starting out. We read about him, he's described in this way. He's a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And he's something of a mystery, I guess. He appears briefly in these chapters and then disappears. Uh, we don't know much about him other than probably Jewish or, and Greek uh, background. We don't know if he had a family, a wife, children, or, or even how he became a follower of Jesus Christ. But we do learn a lot about his character in these two chapters, chapters six and seven of, of Acts. And Carl Beach, the writer of the devotional we've been looking at, he lists his, uh, his characteristics, his qualities that make him extraordinary. And here's just a few. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He knew the scriptures well. We have a record of his message in chapter seven. We have um, evidence of a servant heart. He was willing to serve in chapter six. He performed miracles as reference to that. He was a brilliant communicator. We know that because of the message. He was brave. He didn't back down in, in the face of an angry mob when confronted with them. And he, ultimately he died speaking out for what he believed in um, and saw heaven open up before him in a miraculous way. In short, he was the kind of Christian that we aspire to be like. Um, and you could describe him as Christ-like. So verse eight of chapter six says, now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. <clears throat> wow, but you, you get the sense that he wasn't the kind to make a big show of it. Um, he was happy to be in the background most of the time. Uh, and in chapter six, we read about a dispute about food being distributed unequally among the poor. The, the Hellenistic, that's the Greek speaking widows, <clears throat> excuse me, were missing out, or they were seen to be missing out or ignored. And he was chosen by the leaders along with others to ensure the correct distribution of food to these widows. And it was a tricky task. Yeah, you know, he had to deal with people who were complaining, uh, all sorts of uh, difficult sort of, uh, I suppose you might call it conflict resolution problems um, to deal with. But he could be trusted to do it wisely and efficiently. Maybe it was his Hellenistic and Jewish background uh, that perhaps helped him to understand both communities and later to preach to both audiences. So this shows how God uh, can use our, our past, uh, our qualities that we already have uh, to help shape our testimony and our witness to others. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> The dispute was sorted out. The poor was fed. But furthermore, verse 7 of chapter 6 says that the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Such was the response to Stephen and to his companions. So from verse 9 onwards, however, there is another conflict and this one does not end in resolution. This was through no fault of Stephen. Uh, he began to experience opposition, arguments from members of the synagogue. Um, they called the synagogue of the freedmen. And I think that was people who were once slaves, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen, it says. Uh, verse 10, but they could not stand up against the wisdom the spirit gave him as he spoke. So he was a wise, a wise chap. And because they were upset with him and wanted rid of him, they got false witnesses to say all sorts of things about him, have him brought to trial in front of the Sanhedrin um, and try to get him accused of something really serious like blasphemy. If all this sounds familiar, it is. It's what happened to Jesus. Um, and how would you feel? Let me ask you this question. How would you feel if you were brought to trial with clearly false accusations, trumped up charges. Well, I would certainly want to defend myself. Um, I would have a sense of injustice. Uh, I would be upset, angry even. Um, but this is what it says about Stephen. Verse 15, all that were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. <laughs> if I was being falsely accused of something, I don't think I'd have the face of an angel. I think I'd have a pretty bad scowl on. But his face was not like that. It was shining. So even under that kind of pressure, 
Um, he maintained a godly attitude. And what follows is also extraordinary. In Act 7, we have a record of what he said. And it's an amazing message. He outlines the, a detailed history of Israel and their relationship with God. It's an epic story. And God inspired him to speak this boldly, culminating in describing Israel's failure to recognise Jesus, the Messiah. Rejecting and murdering him, just as they'd done <coughs> excuse me, with the prophets and faithful men throughout Israel's history and throughout the generations. And Stephen's speech was an indictment against Israel and their failure um, as the chosen people of God who'd been given the law, the holy things, and the promise of the Messiah to do as they were chosen to do. So naturally, these accusations, though true, were not received well by the Jews, and they falsely accused him of blasphemy and sent him out to be stoned. And it makes for difficult reading, um, knowing he's innocent, knowing that he's such a good guy, and he then becomes the early church's first martyr. And we may ask God, why did you allow that to happen? And Carl Beach in his devotional says, the reality of God's love may seem incompatible with suffering and martyrdom, the kind experienced by Stephen. But what's clear to me in this account is that uh, Carl Beach says, just before Stephen's murder, God cocooned him, as it were, in his presence. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 and 56 records some of the final moments um, of Stephen's life just before he stepped through the veil between heaven and earth. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And incredibly, his last moments, he even prayed for forgiveness for his murderers. That's truly Christ-like, isn't it? And the words of Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 to 3, could have been written about the life of Stephen, even though they are applicable to all believers says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. See, the, the life of Stephen kind of stands as a, an example to us all, to draw close to Jesus, to be full of his Holy Spirit and to follow Jesus wherever he leads and whatever the cost. Well, thank you for listening. God bless. Bye for now.